A priest who allegedly abused children remains in the community with seemingly the full knowledge of senior figures in the Catholic Church. The mother of one of the victims has spoken out about her complete loss of faith in the church and 730's tracked down one of the Catholic superiors implicated in the matter, but he has nothing to say about his failure to take information to the police. Adam Harvey reports. <coughs> Armidale in the northern tablelands of New South Wales. The nights are cold this time of year, but it seems a quiet, safe place to live. Yet, in this wide back street lives a man whose presence here frightens some of his neighbours. Well, I have an 11 year old boy and he's half a block from a, from a local school and the children walk to and from school along here every day. Yeah, and my boy, you know, he's out in the backyard on his own. Oh, just, is he looking at him? Is he watching him? Let's raise the issues. Carol Elder says a police officer called her to warn her about the man who moved into the street three years ago. He'd lived in the area most of his life and bought the house he was renting just last month. We were advised about him when he moved in because we had a young boy. Mrs Elder's neighbour is a former priest known as Father F. He was stripped of the priesthood in 2005, more than 20 years after he began molesting local boys. But Father F was never the type to jump back fences or creep through an open window. In the early 80s, parents didn't think twice about letting their children spend time with the priest. That's one of Damien with... Claire Jurd's son Damien was about 11 years old when Father F began taking a particular interest. He thought I'm a, he might have been about 11 then, about the time that he, he would have been abused, I think. And then we used to go to maths every Sunday and then he'd cry and wouldn't want to go to maths. And of course I didn't know why and, and we'd sort of virtually have to stand at the, the window and the door to make sure he didn't run away. It took Damien three years to tell anyone what had happened to him. Damien started to cry and he said he sobbed for about 10 minutes and then he um, told him what really happened and then Dr Russell had the police, um, the doctor examined him and he still had anal scarring three years after what it, when it had happened. Damien's account was never heard by a jury because after Father F was arrested in 1987 a magistrate stopped the case going to trial saying the 15-year-old's credibility could not match that of the priest. Devastating for him, and yet they believed the word of a priest against... And we had so much evidence. By 1992, after Father F had moved to Sydney's Parramatta Parish, the church hierarchy heard more reports that the priest was assaulting children. He was called to a meeting at Sydney's St Mary's Cathedral with three of the church's most senior figures. Fathers Brian Lucas, John Usher and Wayne Peters. The current Archbishop of Sydney, George Pell, told Four Corners that Father F made no admissions at that meeting. But that's not the version of events outlined by one of the men present, Father Wayne Peters, in a letter written just eight days after the meeting. In the letter, Father Peters said Father F confessed to abusing five boys in the early 80s, some as young as 10, performing oral sex on two of the boys at least once a month. I just can't believe that a priest would stand up and say in the committal hearing that nothing happened and yet he'll turn around in front of priests and admit that he did it. He must have felt safe in saying it to the priests. Father Peters, there's a... Uh... Father Wayne Peters is still a senior church figure in northern New South Wales. We found him arriving at his grand parish house in Urella. That's just 20 minutes from Father F's run-down home in Armidale. You did write a letter to senior church management, didn't you? I have no comment to make to you. While Father Peters refused to answer our questions, Claire Jurd says he and the other senior priests should have acted two decades ago. You had admissions and you never went to police. Why not? Should they have gone to police? Of course they should have. Yeah, under those circumstances, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, when, I mean, when Damien admitted to a psychiatrist that he'd been sexually ab abused by a priest, it was their obligation to go to the police. 
kids. So I think in that case it'd be the same. It appears Father F's alleged confession wasn't passed on to anyone. The priest was quietly told he couldn't hold mass anymore. But he remained a priest until 2005 and he continues to live amongst some of his alleged victims. The church says it will investigate its handling of the Father F scandal. But a statement from Archbishop George Pell seems to preempt at least some of the findings of that investigation. Neither Father Lucas nor Monsignor Usher was aware of the existence and contents of Father Peter's letter until it was raised by the Four Corners program. The letter does not reflect their recollections of the meeting or notes of the meeting held by the church's professional standards office. There's a lot of flowers around. Damien Jurd killed himself in 2001. His mother doesn't trust the church to investigate itself. Well, if the church do it themselves, I haven't much faith in the outcome of it. It needs someone independent to the church to look into it. And the Catholic Church has declined 7.30's repeated requests for an interview on this matter. We'll keep trying.